OK, what I have here is a collection of clips stored on an SDHC card that was recorded with a Panasonic HDCTM900 camcorder, saved to an SDHC 8GB uh, card, which you can see has mounted here on my Apple Mac desktop. Now, when I open the contents of the card, what I see is three folders here. What I want to do is to in actually inspect the AVCHD clip files and they exist in a folder called private, so we have to go to there, down through another folder called AVCHD, into a folder called BDMV, and finally what we need to do is to look for a folder called stream. Right, now let's make this, uh, let's go uh, bigger with this so I can see what we're dealing with, okay? And I'll come up to here a little bit, right. Now you can see that what we have in this folder called stream there is uh, a list of files that have the file extension .mts, mts for mpeg transport stream, as you can see there, okay? So if we just took that clip, for instance, uh, and that clip, um, we can see that uh, they are... Um, or fairly large clips, 30 meg, 27 meg, and so on. And we can see a thumbnail representation of the clip here, thanks to a little application from Shedworks called Quick Look. So if I right click on the clip file name and then uh, select uh, Quick Look, I can get a quick look into the clip in order to be able to um, just just give me a visual indication of what's in there really. Now with this uh, I can go full screen with it so I can see a full screen uh, representation of what's what's in there or if I just do that again uh, I can stretch it up so I can see it a bit bigger and sometimes it just helps. Um, it's a bit better than the the basic um, cover flow style viewer that we have here, um, which of course we can just spin through anyway, or I can do it on the arrows on the keyboard, like so. Um, uh, and what uh, Quick Look is good at is utilising uh, cover flow and giving us a very quick snapshot look into the file. So Quick Look is a, a pretty good way of just giving us a very instant thumbnail of the clip itself, okay? It's only a still image, it's not movement, but sometimes that's enough, okay? So that's quick look. Now, let's say I, I want to do some manipulation of the clips itself. I've got some clips here that are 1920 by 1080i, okay? They're 50 interlaced fields per frame. I'm in Europe, which is in PAL land, and for us, it's 50 interlaced frames, 25 frames per second. If you're in America or Japan or other places, yours will be 60 and 30 respectively, OK? Um, but we're 50i25p. Now, what I want to do is to take these files and down convert them in order that when they're edited in either Apple Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro CS4 or CS5, um, I can output them to YouTube as 720p files. I can output them to an iPad as 720p. And I find that on the machine that I'm working on here, the one that you're looking at, it's preferable for me because it's only a it's it's a Core 2 Duo machine. It's not an i5 or an i7 or anything like that. I've got to be really careful about the clip files that I'm introducing into the editing program. And I have to do so in a way which doesn't make editing really lumpy for me. And I find that editing in 720p for stuff that's going to be output as 720p is the best way to do it. So how do I get the files that are currently 1920 by 1080i, full HD, AVC HD, down to something that I can edit as 720p? Well, one of the solutions that I have on the computer is this, and it's called Turbo.264HD from Elgato. So let me just open it. Now, if I just shrink this around and make it a bit more manageable like so, I'll put that to there to make better use of my uh, screen real estate, as they say. What I have here is a really nice, accessible interface. It's well designed and uh, it makes a huge amount of difference, especially for people who've never been involved in this uh, video file conversion stuff before. Now, what I want to do is to take these files and I want to convert them to 1280 by 720p, which, as you may know, is the sort of lower secondary version of uh, the HD specification. OK, and the way that I do that is this. And it's quite simple. I just take the file and I drag it onto there like so. Now, what I get is a motion uh, preview here. So if I click the arrow key, it will play there and then right in situ with sound, as you can hear. OK, 
So that's that one. I can also trim the clip if I don't want all of it. Then what I do is I just take these trim handles and put it there and bring it up to here. So, you know, that's particularly useful if I've got a very long clip. Maybe I've had to keep the camera running in order to catch a piece of action or something or, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen um, and I wasn't using pre-rec on the Panasonic. Um, you know, I might just want five or six seconds out of the middle of a sequence that is two minutes long. What's the point of converting it all if I know full well that I'm only going to use the bit in the middle? Well, these trim handles enable you to do that, OK? So, you know, you can just preview the bit in the middle like, like so, OK? If you're happy with that, then you just click the Done button and it adds the clip to the list, OK? So there you go. Now, the next thing I need to do is to consider what output format I want to give this particular clip. Now, I've already said that I want to be editing in HD 720p, so you'll see that Elgato gives me a preset there of 720. I could convert it to 1080p. Don't forget that it's 1080i at the moment, 50 interlaced fields, making up 25 frames per second. But I might want, um, I might want 50 progressive frames or 25 progressive frames. I can choose here what I want, and if I don't get what I want in the presets, then I can go down to the edit mode, and I've got a whole load of other stuff. I can interact with a whole set of different settings here, okay? So, you know, I can play with the uh, the sizes of the frame even. I can give them, you know, specific frames, uh, frame sizes. Um, I can go down to frame rates. I can adjust the frame rate, either 25 or 50. Uh, I can use overscan on or off and uh, I can affect the aspect ratio. It's currently 16 by 9, um, but I could make it 14, 9, 4, 3 and so on. Um, and then there's more complex stuff down here, which um, I tend not to play with, to be honest, <laughs> because, um, you know, you really you really are starting to drill down into the complexity of the file itself. And when you're dealing with H.264, you've got to be a little bit careful about what you're doing. OK, so you've got other settings here for sound. You can change the sample rate, uh, 24, 32, 44.1 or 48 um, uh, kilohertz here and uh, data rates similarly. So if you know what you're doing, if you know what you, you need to be targeting, you can actually impose all of this stuff onto your conversion and get the conversion that you want. And of course, you can save these as a preset so that you can just drop um, you can just drop stuff in and then choose it from the preset. And you can see here that I've got some presets here anyway that I've that I've set up for other applications, including presets to go to standard definition. Could be that I'm doing uh, a a uh, HD edit, but I also want as a secondary option, I want some standard definition files as well for doing in a separate context. Well, I've got those here as well. OK, so so, you know, there is that uh, there is that choice. I've got um, uh, choice, the choice to upload directly, um, for instance, to YouTube or whatever. And you just put in what you need there. You add one and then add another so you can go to YouTube, Vimeo, Rever and so on and other stuff here, chapter markers, closed captions and so on. Chapter markers quite useful if you're going to um, be doing some interactive stuff within the, the context of the video. So let's just choose a preset and, um, and that's kind of what I'll be working to. OK, now it might be that um, in addition to your wanting uh, that preset to be applied to the clip, you might want to also compress the clip in a different way within the same batch process. So if I put that back in there, now what I can do is that I can choose another preset. So I can say, well, I, I want a preset that will compress it to iPhone as well. And, uh, you know, I want another one that will compress it to just drop another one in. You can see the, the list automatically expands down. Um, I want one that will go out to iPod or uh, Sony PlayStation or whatever. So you can have any number of available presets here as applied to the same clip and it will do the process um, in the batch accordingly. So if I just want to check what the original file is, you can see I've got the, it'll tell me here that it's an H.264 AVC 1920 by 1080 25 frames per second. And uh, of course I can give it a name, I can give it some other metadata, and I can uh, um, also, uh, you know, change the type, it's a movie or a TV show, uh, and so on, okay, which is, you know, another bit of useful metadata if you're storing lots and lots of clips. And of course, if I don't want this one, then I'd just simply click that and take it off, all right, so so that's what we have there, all right. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, 
that's how Elgato works. So let's just say I want to uh, save it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, uh, let's just create a new folder and I'm going to call it 720p clips like so. So I'll leave it on my desktop here like that. And now what I'm going to do is go into preferences and I'm going to tell it where to put the clips. OK, so on the desktop here like so. Um, I'm going to go to other like that. I've put it onto the desktop, so let's just stick it there. That's going to be the file where it does it. Close that one down. Click start. Now what you'll see is that it's actually chomping its way through the conversion. It does it quite quickly. And the reason it does it quickly is that Elgato Turbo 264 uses an outboard processor in a little USB dongle. Now that takes the stress off the computer's main processor and it speeds up the processing work at the same time. Now for one clip it makes a bit of difference but for lots of clips it certainly makes a bit of difference especially when you've got you know uh, different variants of the same clip that you want to be converted in the way that I've described. So this uh, outboard dongle is where the real number crunching is done and and it's that that makes the the difference okay now this clip has just about converted it'll ping when it's done it there you go let's have a look in here now so what we have now is the clip i didn't name the clip uh, while we were in elgato but it doesn't matter because you know i can name it here i can call it um clip i can call it clip uh 12 uh 720p there you go. All right. So now let's just uh, open it with QuickTime. Do it properly. Open it with QuickTime. And there's our clip. So now what I have is a 720p variant of the clip that is still on the SD card. And it's that clip that I could now import into another application uh, in order that I could do some editing with. So I'll close that one. And uh, of course, you know what what you can do with this is that you can set up presets do a lot do a bit of testing create some presets that exactly match your requirements and then use that preset to process a whole batch of clips uh, as you require them okay so that is a very quick insight into the way that elgato turbo.264 hd works it's not uh, a free application and it's not a cheap application largely because of the hardware that you get with it okay but it's a very very good and a very quick solution to the conversion of uh, AVC HD files and all sorts of other files for all manner of export requirements okay um, and for that reason uh, I use it and uh, of course I recommend it wholeheartedly so um, if that's helped you then I'm very pleased and thanks for watching